What's going on YouTube? It's Paul Paul Piper back here with you. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about Bell's Three Nuns pipe tobacco and uh, a little bit about this uh, recent budget that was passed in Congress federal budget that will probably be signed um, and uh, put into effect so I'll give you my comments on that but we're smoking this uh, Bell's Three Nuns in a Frank Medico uh, rusticated bulldog this is actually a state pipe I picked up I don't know about a month ago and uh, not a bad pipe, not a bad pipe at all. I might need to refinish this one. It's got, you know, some inconsistencies in the in the finish, but uh, yeah, it says Medico imported briar, and then it's got the F for Frank Medico. So let's look at the uh, presentation of Bell's Three Nuns. Very classic appearance of the ten Bell's Three Nuns tobacco. None nicer. Pipe tobacco made in Denmark under license of Imperial Tobacco Limited, England. And then on the reverse. May 2015, made in Denmark by McBaron Tobacco, imported by Sutliff Tobacco Company. Uh, it's got the warning label 1.75 ounces. Now, there's a presentation of the tobacco itself. It's kind of in fairly loose coins or medallions. And they're fairly small. And they've got some loose strands here as well. But you'll rub this stuff out. Maybe take a couple coins or medallions, rub them between your thumb and forefinger, and pack your pipe with it as you would any other coin or medallion. Now, as far as the smell of the tent itself, it's got the grassiness. I mean, this is a Virginia-based pipe tobacco. I think there is Perique in here as well. I didn't even look it up as far as uh, what the composition is, but it's definitely grassiness. Very, very slight hint of citrus. citrus. And then smoke tobacco. And uh, if you're at home, grab a pipe, light up with me. I've been smoking on this for a couple minutes. I mean, as far as what I'm tasting, it's got the normal characteristics of a vapor or Virginia Pre. It's smooth. It's not offensive. You get the spiciness. I always think that with vapors, I always get the spiciness to the forefront. It just seems to hit the the top of my tongue, the very tip of my tongue, and uh, just kind of elicits a 
um, spiciness flavor to it. Your mileage may vary, I suppose. And that's really what typically dominates, at least with me. As far as sweetness goes, maybe a little undertone of sweetness. But I definitely think that the thing that pops is the spiciness. But it is smooth. It's not offensive. It's a good smoke. It's a good quality smoke. This stuff's actually fairly pricey. You know, you're going to, I think I paid in a tobacco shop upwards of. 15, oh yeah, it was more than 15, I think it was maybe $18 for that 10 in Michigan. So that means that, you know, if you go online, you're probably going to pay $5 less. At least around here, I seem to notice that the markup on 10s uh, at, the, at the brick and mortar shops in Michigan are going to be about five dollars over what the online uh, uh, retail price is. So this stuff probably online is about fourteen bucks, and uh, making it about eighteen nineteen bucks at the brick and mortar locations. When you can get a ten of Dunhill or anything else, nine ten dollars online. But you're going to pay shipping. So there's that to uh, take into consideration. So we'll go ahead and continue to, to smoke this here. See if it changing changes in characteristics. Um, but I will say that, you know, it's good, but... Is there better in its category? Yes, there's there's most definitely better. Um, I would put Orlick Golden Sliced in the same category as uh, Bell's Three Nuns, and Orlick is better to me, in my opinion. So what are we going to talk about tonight? We're going to talk about just the issue of the budget. Congress has recently uh, put together a uh, a budget package. It's going to be sent off to be signed on the president's desk. And, you know, for those of you who may be fiscal conservatives, people who want actual fiscal responsibility in government. I mean, government uh, asks uh, its constituents, and we normal Americans, to live within our means. We have to budget. We can't spend more than we bring in. Uh, we can't just go out to the money tree in the backyard or print our own money. Obviously, if you do print your own money, you're probably going to be put in jail for counterfeiting. But that's essentially what government does and has been doing for quite some time. It's not living within its means. It just continues to fund all these uh, entitlement programs and liabilities uh, without addressing the issue. They just go and, and use the treasury to, to print money and buy its own debt, buy government bonds, 
use quantitative easing with the uh, uh, Federal Reserve and it's just not sustainable you know we have a 1.1 trillion dollar budget that contained pretty much every lobbyist handout that you can imagine and it was put together by a Republican controlled uh, Congress and you know at least on the campaign trail the Republicans try to uh, be the party of fiscal conservatism that's not what I saw in that budget that budget contained you know handouts to all these different special interests and that's about it you know and our new president seems uh, all the more pleased to uh, to sign it all I can say is that the Piper will need to be paid at one time or another you just can't continue to kick the can down the road and think that you're just going to deal with issues in the future you know it's time to uh, get a grasp on the budget, cut unnecessary waste, uh, stop all these uh, handouts to all these lobbyists, and uh, you know, actually try to get some responsibility. And it just seems such a foreign concept to our politicians of both parties. I mean, it's a given with parties on the left. You know, they get elected by playing Santa Claus. But when Republicans are doing the same thing, they're just playing Santa Claus to corporate interests. It just kind of makes you wonder, like, who is uh, looking out for you? Who's looking out for the average American who works, who pays taxes, who tries to do the best and be responsible in their lives, when you have government on both sides of the political spectrum that doesn't give a shit, you know? They don't care. They don't care that they're just adding additional national debt and a burden to you, your children, your grandchildren. They don't give a shit. You know, they want to get reelected. And if it's a corporate interest and they do their bidding then they'll probably have enough money to run a campaign and get reelected uh, next election cycle and if they're Democrat you know they'll get elected by you know promising all these handouts to their constituency at at home so it's a uh, just very uh, uh, concerning um, because it's just, it's not sustainable. Uh, you have to get a grasp on, on government spending and printing money and buying, buying debt as we had been doing, you know, we've been doing, uh, for the last eight, nine years is, is not sustainable. Um, and certainly just passing budgets like this, uh, is not going to work not going to work at all so I don't know I hope that uh, there is some hope you know something to look out over the horizon and say that things are going to be better but uh, you know you've got when you have the party that goes on the uh, campaign trail and and preaches against big government and all these handouts and then they get in power and they just continue the same thing as if they had a D by their name. Um, what do you do? What do you do? To sit back and, and take it, I guess. 
you know. Uh, it's kind of a sad commentary to even say that. That we're uh, so domesticated that we just take it. We just take it. You know. And I guess if you're looking for virtue in the political sphere, that's a fool's errand. You're not going to find it. Uh, most people who, are, who gravitate to politics do so for their own personal payoff. And, uh, you know, it's sad. It's sad. It's a lack of, uh, it's a lack of virtue on, on their part. I suppose as well. But when it comes down to it, who do you look out for? You look out for number one. And they're in a position of power. They have lied and cheated their way to political influence. And they are uh, reaping the benefit, reaping the reward of that. So, I don't know. I was just very, uh, you know, upset by that. I was hoping that we would, uh, the people would regain control and would uh, stop all this growth of, of big government, government intrusion. You would have a return to uh, sovereignty amongst the individual, individual rights, liberties. And uh, it looks like it's going to be same old, same old, you know. It's all the uh, powerful interests are being taken care of, and we have to pay the bill. We have to pay the bill. So, anyway, it is what it is, I suppose. And people will either wake up and demand more from their government, or they will inherit the government that they deserve. So, three nuns. It's not worth the price. You know, it's it's not bad. It's it's a good quality tobacco, good quality smoke, but it's not worth the extra dollars, hard earned dollars. Um so you know, try it I suppose. Maybe you'll like it more than I do. But uh yeah, it's not worth the extra coin. So um anyway, that's been my review my rant and if the good lord's willing and the creek don't rise i'll see you next time it's been paul paul piper take care